Ah, uh, yes, this is the place. Arbus Brothers. Arbus Brothers. That's right, Arbus Brothers hand cut crystal. Good times. You can take the finish ball up. Well, you know, watching you cut the rod is pretty cool too. So let's let's have some fun with that. I mean, this rod is one inch in diameter, glass. Okay. Now the big question is borosilicate glass. What is the actual heat in the flame? Uh, between four and five thousand. Four and five thousand degrees. Would that be Fahrenheit or centigrade? Fahrenheit. And it is running like putty. He makes it look easy. Man, he makes it look easy. Uh, and I guess you only grab the hot end once. That's right. Yeah, you, you just grab that hot end exactly one time. Not to say that. Let me go get a better angle here. And that is that is just too cool for school. The advantage to doing this lamp work is you can get very detailed with it. The downside is we can't go as big as long glass. There's a little trade off there. Right? So you basically just keep messing with it until it gets pliable and lets you know when you can work it. That and our limitations to how big. Oh, your oven there, your, your yeah, cool down oven. I mean, if you exceed that, obviously, that's the complete of these, you have to be able to annual it. You can't go in the annual it. Well, if it don't fit, it's just going to shatter. Now, the only thing that kind of sucks is actually with the camera work here. You're actually losing a lot of the cool colors that you're actually seeing in real life. I mean, there's there's like blues, reds, yeah. and all kinds of like a rainbow of colors that are coming off this glass and into the flame. I mean, I don't know if it's really going to show on the camera so much because, you know, it's just like a polarizing. Yeah, does it does show off. Yeah. Okay, I mean, even in this little flip camera, I mean, I'm only pushing. The glasses that I'm wearing. Right. Just watch out all the ultraviolet. Okay. Typically, when you're filming and they really want to do like a. Uh, oh, they put a gel in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah they'll put one of these lenses of some kind of filtering. So I guess if I had a pair of sunglasses in front of this thing, that would block the ultraviolet, but I don't think this thing's going to worry about getting a tan. No. And I left my welding helmet back in Baltimore. Now, is that cobalt glass or just happens to be blue? Translucent cobalt. That's cool, man. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask your name. Your name your, I'm sorry, sorry, what's your name? Your name? William. William. William the Glass Man. And we're over here in downtown Disney, so we are seeing this stuff firsthand, artisan style, being made in real time. And I'm going to throw in the video link so he knows for sure I'm not just playing games with him. I am going to post a video. And you were saying earlier you've been doing this for like 30 years, correct? Yep. That's right, folks. It only looks easy to play with something that's at a few thousand degrees. And what is this one that we're making? This is called an Imperial Angel Fish. Just put the stripes, translucent color over the white. Is that kind of like that uh, millifloria thing we were talking about earlier? Uh, somewhat. Anytime you put a color in the application, it's just part of the process of, of prepping. If you don't have certain colors, obviously you have to make them. Uh, 
I'm on a small band and actually pulled some stringers to give it a thinner application. Takes a little bit of time. Uh, and never mind the fact that you also have that learning curve of how fast to draw into the thing. Too fast, it doesn't stick. Too slow, it makes too big a blob. Yep. But it's all freehand. Right. And I know about you know sticking stuff together. I mean, I got a MIG welder, so I, I know about drawing beads. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've stuck together, <laughs> I've basically stuck together my old Honda. Your old what? Old Honda. Did you? I have an old Honda CRX and it's got a lot of welds. Wow, I have one of those. Yeah, you know, also known as the uh, the great engine, bad body. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't that true? It's like you, uh, you think the word water and they start rusting. Yeah. Well, they last it though. Oh, I still got to sit in my driveway. Really? Yeah, I just I got to do a little bit of work to it before I drive it around. But what year is that? One? Eighty-five. Uh, Eighty-five Honda CRX S. Yeah, eighty-five CRX SI. And I, I just don't want to drive it around to do some more work on it. And then my uh, yeah, is that too bad? Uh, no, my neighborhood next door dirt bags basically busted out my passenger side window. Ah. Yeah, because they didn't like the fact I told them not to park in my driveway because. Oh. I moved out of that house. I live in a new house. Driveway? My driveway. I live in, uh, well, I used to live in Baltimore City. And uh, let's just say that they were a um, uh, chapter between 9 and 7. Yeah, kind of the low rent district moved out to Myburg and took it down a few notches. Not to say that my neighborhood was great to begin with, but uh, let, let's just say that it got low class real quick. Yeah, so they didn't like the fact I told them not to park in my driveway because, well, I wasn't in the house, but they still thought that they could use my driveway. Right. We uh, moved from the city to the county for obvious reasons. Uh, after the 3 o'clock drug raid, it was like, okay, we got to leave. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Now, unfortunately, in Baltimore? in Baltimore City, it's just, yeah. And then they go, so why are you leaving? It's like, um, because I don't like living next to you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what, what flavor of the, you know, the rainbow that you are. It's just you are not a good person to be next to. You are a low-rent dirtbag. <laughs> well, you're being honest. Hey, I, I, I call them as I see them, man. <laughs> That's right. So how many miles do you have on it? Uh, like 140, I think. It, it basically was like a weekend car for a long time. I bought it and, okay, I bought it for like 800 bucks. I had a friend of mine that had uh, a Honda and he had uh, almost a million miles on it. I don't doubt it. The only thing that really- took care of it. Yeah, the only thing that really goes wrong with those cars is like little nitpicky electrical and vacuum things. But the basic, you know, engine and everything, it's dead. What size motor does that have that little one point? Uh, one five fuel injection. One point five. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's like ninety three horsepower in a car that weighs with me and it barely a scant ton. I mean the car by itself weighs like you know eight eighteen seventy. It's like yeah, eight, eighteen seven. That. It's like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was the lightest car they sold in the United States back then. I mean it weighs less than a smart car. Does it? Yeah. Smart cars have all kinds of like extra engineering and stuff I on them. One of those and I got in an accident. A and, smart car? Well, no, in the, in the Honda. Oh, ouch. And I'm telling you, it, it about totaled this thing. I'm done. I don't doubt it. All right, folks, I'm going to break off in this section until we get a little further along because we're getting in some run time here. So I'm going to break off to the next segment. Stand by on that one. All right, folks, we, all right, folks, we got this thing built up to the point where we're now here into the squish stage of the fishy. Or flattening. Or flattening. We're flattening the fishy. Of course, we're talking about you know, all kinds of other various things beyond that. Uh, I'm assuming end towards me is obviously the face, right? Okay, so back end of the fish is still stuck on the rod. Front end of the fish is facing towards me. Now the uh, piece of of uh, black item there that you're working it with, what is that? That's graphite. So just a graphite pad and a graphite. 
basically uh, to retain the heat so it doesn't chill the glass. So you don't do like the glass blowers or like the wet newspaper and the, the, the wet pieces of wood? and well, because of this glass being a hard glass and it's, the temperature, uh, temperature is so great, you don't want to waste any of that energy. Exactly. Hang on a sec, I gotta talk to Mrs. Dude. I'm gonna be right back. All right, we're, we're back after dealing with Mrs. Dude. Mrs. Dude takes preeminence. You know, you have to answer the phone or, well, you know, William knows exactly what happens when you don't answer the phone when the wife calls. <laughs> you are dead meat. That's a rather fishy looking fishy. Have you ever done any of the guys from like um, uh, Finding Nemo or anybody like that? Uh, actually, we have an artist uh, submitting some. I don't do one because of the copyright things and they have to, everything has to be approved. Uh. Disney, you're into the, any Disney characters, they have to be approved. It is part of the Vicky, Mickey Weimar. It will be approved, it has to be surveyed, it has to be performed in a prescribed manner, and the rules must be followed to the letter, or else you are wrong. <laughs> then the mouse, mouse stockle will be after you. And essentially you just wash the flame over to get the shine back, correct? Uh, well, actually, I'm giving it a, a, a overall heat and a wash of the flame. I don't want to melt it, but I want to maintain it again. That, that temperature is crucial. It, exactly. It cools off, it cracks, it gets too hot, it flows too much. And I've lost the heat. And of course, there's always that artisan thing about what part of the flame do you use. Right. That is not your standard blowtorch. That is cool. I guess we're now doing fin activity. I guess he speaks Finnish. Now it's to the point where you go home and basically you have like a collection of stuff from other people and you take that as inspiration or just like collection. Uh, do I have a personal collection? Correct. Uh, yeah. I have some pieces that came out really good. It's kind of like that. Home as well. Yeah, it's kind of like the thing. It's like you look at anybody that actually has like a workstation. They've always got like their inspiration pieces, and uh, you know, case in point, I do as well. I mean, you look, you look on like my desk, and I have like the tchotchkes and all the various things. Like you know, some people have sent to my channel, and um, you know, personal items and what have you. But you know, mostly it's just like stuff. I'm like looking around. I'm seeking inspiration. Sometimes it finds me. Uh, most of the time, usually I'm getting jumped on by my cats because I do actually have a home office. Unless it's, you know, like the, the appropriate time of like daytime and then I have my front windows, uh, the shades are up and the cats are laying in the sun, which is a nice distraction. I, I recommend that wholeheartedly. Definitely in my uh, private studio, I have a very extensive collection. Now, do you actually have like a kiln and all the rest of that stuff? And so you're, you're hardcore. Yep. Addiction. You don't just do it here. Like I said, we do it for the love of it. Now I've seen that where you basically have like uh, they're working like a glass piece and they're doing like glass blowing and they're switching ends to work it. And they do that final blow and then well, break and you have to, you know, that's the process. If you open a base up at the top, 
I mean, how was it started? Obviously. So there has to be a beginning and an end. You need handles to do that because, unlike any other material, you can't touch it with your fingers. Yeah, it's not like Play-Doh, it's hot Play-Doh. Yeah, it's very hot. I did that the other day to touch a fin that I had just put on. Uh, I was like, dare you. Uh, I said, you didn't actually think I was going to touch it with my finger. I grabbed the graphite, you know? Yeah, I did that once as a little kid. I was uh, I was with one of my cousins, and uh, he was firing up the uh, the oxyacetylene torch, and he was bending some concrete nails and doing some figure work. <laughs> And he was brazing the thing together, and I was a little kid at the time. And he gets done with it, he sits down the counter, and I was like, "Oh, that's really cool!" I'm reaching out for it, and he's screaming, "No!" Just as I was about six inches away from it, he managed to grab me. Yeah, it was like that would have been a huge yeah. mistake. And then he was like, "Here's why," and he dropped it in a bucket of water, and that thing sizzled for like about a minute. It's like, okay, I now associate torch with hot. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this happens so fast that generally your mind can't even register. Oh, yeah, you grab a hold, you hear the sizzle. You're in shock. Yeah, you hear the sizzle. Well, actually, I got it so bad one day that it was like an implosion. What, you dropped the hot piece like on your leg or something? No, I ran my... The back of my hand was knocking something off through the flame. Oh! Through it. Wow. Yeah, that was many, many years ago. Uh, I remember years back I caught a bottle rocket on the back of one finger and that was pretty intense. It was like supposedly supposed to come out of the bottle. Well, it didn't. Yeah. You know, I had the whole, had the whole, oh, yeah. whole rocket engine Buddy's basically telling you, yeah, you gotta, you gotta hold it now. Uh, uh, I've done that. Uh, well, it was supposed to go out of the bottle, but it didn't. Right. Ugh, that hurt. That's when you get a man up and say, oh, you gotta hold it. Yeah. Needless to say, my friend that basically lives life crazy had a bottle full of bottle rockets and was chain firing them. I launched off one and I got fried. Yeah, how's life rewards in that one? Life Yeah. I hear you. Well, yeah, he must have saved up some karma because he caught a Roman candle in the ear. Oh. Yeah, like his brother and him were having a Roman candle fight and it literally got trapped in his ear. Yeah, yeah, like second or third degree burns, like in the inside of the conch and whatnot. It got, it got trapped? It got trapped in his ear and was going... <laughs> I was like, oh, dude. He goes, yeah, that was not fun. I think he's got like one ear that looks normal now and one ear that's really shiny. <laughs> he's locked out. It didn't enter his canal, though. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to go in the oven because the front of this fish is probably cooling off tremendously. So. But you can see he's about, oh, about 75% done. Yeah. Good stuff. This is something that my boss can look at and know that... You did something! I'm actually doing something out here. Cool. And now I'll be finishing off and make the tail. Because that gives that some time in the oven to give it an overall heat. Heat back up and stabilize. Yeah. Overall, everything. Now, unfortunately, folks, this is going to be one of those longer videos, so I'm definitely going to give you guys warnings before I, I crank this thing up, but it, it's definitely going to be a half an hour video, all right? So if you guys don't want to watch for half an hour, you should probably be looking for, like, reference points of what looks good, what doesn't look good, and where we're just blabbing. And uh, unfortunately, you know me, I will be basically very, very descriptive. And, of course, William's not, not hurting in that regard because he's, he's just a font of information. So, he gets the tail more built up, we'll crank up again. I'm gonna break off on this. All right, so now we have come to the point of fishy assembly. We have a tail, we have a fish. Tail and fish become one unit. Now, you did have to stabilize that in the oven a little bit, you were saying, because it's starting to cool off. Right. So, literally, you take the piece that was attached to the back of the tail, you give it a hot spot, pop it off. The tail is now attached because you let it stick together and get cool. So now you have a fishy. 
Now, do you do like a loop for hanging or something, or how's that actually go? This is actually going to be put onto a piece of glass coral. Let me, Here's uh, one of the finished products. That's cool, man. So, oh, he stands on coral. Oh, that is cool, man. And then, of course, you give the uh, the tail an artistic bent so it looks like he's swimming. That's cool, man. All right, folks, so if you think this thing just grows out of nowhere, that's exactly how the process works. Now, of course, William, you actually have to make the, uh, the coral base, and that's more work. But the fish now has to stabilize in temperature so it doesn't just shatter like, well, China. Now, is it one of those deals where it basically just sits on the table and after a while it just starts developing like these stress fractures and then just pop? No, nothing like that. Once it's a deal... Well, I mean, before you do that. Is it kind of like one of those deals where it just violently does it on its own when you don't anneal it? Uh, yeah, yeah probably pop. More or less, as soon as you finish the piece. We have the artistic bend, so Fishy is swimming. Uh, they do move. They do move. So, roughly, how long does it take you to make the coral base now? Uh, the whole piece probably takes about 45 minutes. So, for all intents and purposes, all time involved in Mr. Fishy, you got about an hour and change. All right, folks, so when you see these things sitting on the shelf, there's a reason why the price involved is the price involved, because they don't just magically grow out of nowhere. They actually do require some labor. There's the fish. There's the fishy. Now, he will go in that oven well. I do need Yes. Now, in, in the base of the oven, is there kind of like, like a bed of like, um, no, not... Sand. So just sand keeps, okay. Uh, sometimes, and then we'll put like this uh, substance on the bottom. It's like a blanket type of uh, material that, so when you put a piece in, it doesn't scratch it. Okay, folks, I'm going to break off on this one, but I just want to give you guys the glass man here. This is William. He's located at Downtown Disney. Uh, William, do you have a website or anything like that, or you just work here? Uh, I'm working here uh, full time. He works here full time. So come on and see him. And what's the name of the glass shop again, sir? What's the name of this glass shop? It's a Rivers Brothers Crystal. There you go, folks. We're down street. Well, if you could call it street. We're, we're next to the Lego thing, okay? Just look for the big Lego thing. There's like dinosaurs and uh, Buzz Lightyear and dwarfs. And you know what Legos look like. Just look for Legos. Come on in here and see William and say hey to him. He'll be glad to make you something. Thanks so much for guys coming on by. And as usual, here in the next podcast channel, uh, eat good, keep it a 10 ring, and Glasswork is just all kinds of cool, good times. See you guys. We'll break off on this one. See ya. Urgh!